we need to talk a little bit more about protein structure. And that's because there are four different levels of structure. The first one we already have. We call that the primary structure. And that primary structure is simply the sequence of amino acids. So we're just saying what order they're in. That's our primary structure, what amino acids we have. For secondary structure, we are interested in how amino acid sequences interact with themselves. And this is all going to be due to hydrogen bonds. And that's why I copied this picture. You do not have to draw this. But what I wanted to show you is that here's an amino acid, here's an amino acid. We have our primary structure, which is just the chain of amino acids. But for secondary structure, what we're focused on is these hydrogen bonds that are created between chains. And so the same is true for this. If you have the chain, and imagine this is like a spiral and it's winding, well, you can also have hydrogen bonds occurring here too. And so the two types of secondary structure created by hydrogen bonds are right here. One is the alpha helix. If you need to write that in, go ahead. But an alpha helix is just going to be that spiral. And then you have hydrogen bonds between the different layers. This would be a simplified sketch of an alpha helix. Remember the line is the amino acid sequence. And those red dots are representing hydrogen bonds. The other type is the beta beta pleated sheet. And that is just going to look like those, those like folded up pieces of paper, like the caterpillars or a Jacob's ladder, but the caterpillars that I used to make in kindergarten where you just fold a piece of paper back and forth and back and forth and then draw a face on the end. But anyway, <laughs> this beta pleated sheet may look something like this. So you have your amino acid sequence. Maybe they're connected. So maybe this is all one sequence and then it's held together with some hydrogen bonds. Both shapes are created by hydrogen bonding. Tertiary structure of a protein is going to be interactions between R groups. For secondary structure, we had these hydrogen bonds to make the alpha helix and the beta pleated sheet. With tertiary structure, what we care about is the relationships between the R groups. And that's going to be making something that's going to give us a little bit more of a complex structure. For now though, we can just say that tertiary structure is going to be interactions between those R groups. The fourth level of structure has a fun name called quaternary structure. Looks like quaternary, but it's quaternary structure. With quaternary structure, you have amino acid chains called your subunits coming together to form a single protein. So let's go through an example of what this might look like. In orange, what we may have is some chains just wrapping around themselves, doing their own little thing. Then we might have some beta pleated sheets. Then maybe some alpha helices. Of course, we have primary structure, which is the sequence. 
We have some beta pleated sheets and alpha helices for secondary structure. And the way that it's curling around itself was probably due to its R groups, and that's tertiary structure. But for quaternary structure, we're caring about the primary, secondary, and tertiary structure for multiple amino acid chains. And so they may form a unit. So maybe the red amino acid chain starts with an alpha helix, goes to a beta pleated sheet, crosses over, goes inside, it goes outside. And maybe this blue one just stays towards the outside, but it wraps in, it comes out, wraps in, comes out, whatever. This looks like modern art, but it's also an example of what a protein could look like. And so we have subunit number one, subunit number two, and subunit number three. And together, these make one complete protein. And remember, this is for quaternary structure. And one of the reasons why quaternary structure is so important, because it increases the protein stability.